Hi there. Emile Durkheim was one of the prominent French sociologists in the 19th century. In this video, we will discuss some of his major contributions to the subject sociology. Major contributions are theory of social facts, theory of division of labor, theory and typology of suicide, and the elementary forms of religious life. Let's look into these contributions in detail. Theory of social facts. Social facts means a category of facts with distinctive characteristics consisting of ways of acting, thinking and feeling external to the individual and endowed with the power of coercion by means of which they control him. External to the individuals. Here external means society, the community people, the culture, values and beliefs exist in the society. Coercion and control is the norms, rules and regulations exist in the society. So social facts means a category of facts with distinctive characteristics where individuals, when he or she think, act and feel according to the influence of society. For example, an individual who is a member or who is in a crowd, uh, he think, feel and act according to the sentiments and behaviors of that crowd. An individual who is participating in a strike or a rally is an example for this. Another example is that a child commits suicide because he or she can't tolerate the bullying from his or her classmates. Here, the society influenced the thinking, feeling and acting of an individual. And that is social facts. Durkheim even defined sociology as a science of social facts. Socialized community that the individual belong to has influenced them to do things. Marriage, family, political system, crime, suicide, etc. are examples of social facts. Deviating from the norms of society makes the individual unacceptable or misfit in the group. Social facts study the behavior of entire societies rather than just of particular individuals. Next, we will move on with another contribution of Durkheim to the subject sociology, that is, theory of division of labor. It is one of the major contributions to the field of sociological thought. One of his major book, Division of Labor in Society, in 1893, mentioned the theory of division of labor. The theme of this book is the relationship between individual and society. It's a classic study of social solidarity. Solidarity means unity. It study the harmony or unity in society. Durkheim argued that the nature of social solidarity or social unity depends on the extent of the division of labor. The concept of division of labor has been used in three ways. Technical division of labor, which means it describes the production process. The second one is sexual division of labor. It describes social division between men and women. And the third one is uh, social division of labor. It refers to differentiation in society as a whole. It is in the third sense, that is social division of labor, Durkheim uses this term. In a general sense, the term division of labor involves the assignment to each unit or group a specific share of a common task. As we have already said, Durkheim focuses on the relationship between individual and society. He shows it through the relationship between social solidarity and division of labor. Social solidarity is synonymous with social cohesion or social integration. Social solidarity refers to the integration and degree or type of integration manifest by a society or group. Next, let's explain the link between division of labor and social solidarity. According to Durkheim, the primitive society is characterized by mechanical solidarity, which is based on the consigns collective. And the advanced society is characterized by organic solidarity, which is based on the division of labor. Durkheim made comparisons between societies in terms of solidarity. 
So they're kind of for both of the society as two types of social solidarity that is mechanical solidarity and organic solidarity. So let's look into these types in detail. The first one is mechanical solidarity. It means the social solidarity based upon a homogeneity of values and behavior, strong social constraint and loyalty to tradition and kinship. The term applied to small non-literate societies characterized by a single division of labor, very little specialization of function, only a few social roles and very little tolerance of individuality. The individuals felt the same emotions, cherish the same values and hold the same things sacred. There will be a collective conscience. This type of solidarity prevails in primitive society. Social constraint is expressed most decisively in repressive, severe criminal law which serves to maintain mechanical solidarity. The next one is organic solidarity. It means the social solidarity typical of modern industrial society in which unity is based on the interdependence of a very large number of highly specialized roles in a system involving a complex division of labor that requires the cooperation of almost all similar the groups and individuals of the society. The organic solidarity is similar to the unity of a biological organism in which highly specialized parts or organs must work in coordination if the organism is to survive. It is opposite to mechanical solidarity. The consensus result for division of labor and it is based on civil and administrative law. Next slide shows the third contribution of Durkheim to the subject sociology and that is theory and typology of suicide. Suicide is the act of taking one's own life. Suicide is a conscious act and the person concerned is fully aware of these consequences. Suicide is a highly individual act, yet the motives for a suicide can be fully understood only by reference to the social context in which it occurs. Next, we will move on with the classification of suicide. First one is egoistic suicide which results from the lack of the integration of the individual into his social group. Here, an individual commits suicide when he or she feels alone. The second one is altruistic suicide. It is a kind of suicide which results from the over-integration of the individual into the social group. For example, death of soldiers during war, a suicide bomber, practicing sati, etc. The third one is anomic suicide. It results from the state of normlessness or degeneration found in society. Suicide takes place in a situation which suddenly happens. For example, uh, financial loss, natural disasters uh, due to the uh, death of a charismatic person, etc. And the last one is fatalistic suicide. This type of suicide is due to overregulation in society. For example, prisoner, slave or servant commit suicide due to overregulation. The last contribution of Emil Durkheim is the elementary forms of religious life. In the book, The Elementary Forms of Religious Life, 1912, Durkheim anal analyzes the collective or group forces to study of religion. According to him, religion is one of the main agencies of solidarity and morality in society. It is the unity and solidarity of the community increased by the rituals enacted on religious occasions. The rituals bring the people together. Then the, they, it helps to transmit the culture from one generation to other. The rituals maintain taboos and prohibitions and those who violate are punished. Social disorder happens in society when people don't believe in religion, when there is lack of commitment to a shared belief system, then people tend to pursue their private interest without regard for their fellows. At that condition, 
there will be a social disorder in the society. According to Durkheim, when people follow religion, when they share common belief system, when people get together, then there will be unity and solidarity in society. So that's all for today. Thank you for listening.